people are thirsty of examples and best practices that they can explore further to, I think, deeper their understanding. And so the question are, is to you, and maybe you can uh, mention, and thank you for mentioning Torsten so many times as a, you know, a, a good example of uh, what we are trying to do in terms of system change. So what collaboration uh, um, where you have seen this working really well? So for communities to philanthropy, government to tech, just really one, one minute each to, to close to and give your closing remarks. So, you know, best practices, where, where shall we look at? Thank you, Sanjay. All right, so uh, very quick one. So one of the uh, systems change platforms, societal platforms that we're working on uh, is called Siksha Lokam. It works in the area of developing leaders in the education sector. Um, so working with head teachers, principals, government officials, uh, the 1.5 million schools of India are managed by about four and a half million leaders of different types. And this is an interesting combination of civil society organizations. We have some amazing partners uh, who are very, very strong, powerful NGOs in the education sector. People like Kevel Education Foundation or uh, people like, you know, uh, People Foundation, people uh, uh, or organizations like Mantra for Change, who is an amazing organization driving uh, transformation in education leadership or Sanji Sikya working in Punjab and so on. I could just keep on listing them. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, on the other end is uh, the government, uh, state government, actors, education departments uh, in Punjab, in Andhra Pradesh, in Goa, in Delhi, in different states of the country. And the, the people who are working in uh, different other sectors who are interested in coming. And so because of this digital infrastructure that they have built out, all these actors are coming together and solving problems of education at scale in different parts. And, and sort of finding a bal better balance for all the different systems. Um, so I would certainly urge you to look it up uh, sometime when you have time. Uh, and Thank over to Sibyl. Thank you, Sibyl. Your last minute remark. <laughs> there we go. You seem to have lost my mouse. Um, yeah, I think this is a, <laughs> you actually got me thinking on this question. So thank you to the, the participants who posed it. Um, I, I mean, first, I think development is still ongoing. Um, so, you know, I gave an example of um, the abolition of slavery. Uh, Sanjay gave examples in terms of technology and industrialization. So we've, we've, you know, reached a point where we're not going back. You know, most of us don't even have house phones anymore. We just use cell phones, right? Um, so we, we're reaching these points where we're not going back to certain things because a system change has been affected. Um, in terms of the development work that we're doing, um, around the world, but more particularly in Africa, I think it's still ongoing. So in, in terms of like systems change for agriculture or education or women, it, it's still, we're still on that journey. We're still on um, the path to driving systems change, change for gender equality. Um, I mean, and I think we see it in so many facets in our lives. So I don't know, this, this could actually be another discussion um, with um, this, uh, you know, we, we drive for systems change, but there's always another system that needs to be changed as we progress. I mean, we're seeing this play out in democracies across the world, where the notion of democracy is, is changing and um, the leadership to, to lead that, um, the, the core principles of, of democracy aren't, um, you know, measuring up um, to those those basic tenets. So the notion of democracy needs to, to also change given our changing times. So, you know, this, this to me is actually, I, I don't know that I have an answer all, other than I feel like we are on this journey. Um, we're on this path. Um, we're all contributing. We're going to see a point where um, certain aspects of the system are, are changed, but there's still going to be a new frontier. Um, you know, women's, women's rights, for example, it, this has been such a long journey. Um, and we're just, I don't even know if we're in the middle of it. Thank you, Sibyl. Thank you. And I also feel that we have done a little journey together today, uh, an hour and a half journey, but it was so rich. And uh, it was so rich. Thank you to our wonderful panelists, Sibyl and Sanjay. Thank you for bringing so much, so much wisdom to this discussion. And thank you for your great questions. And, you know, we will be sure to follow up 
on, on your question and some of those were, uh, you know, uh, information, requests for information, we will make sure to respond to you. I feel we covered so much micro to macro, we covered individual at the community level, we covered government, the private sector, role of technology. Uh, you know, I, I feel very grateful for this conversation. I feel my take and will be my last uh, uh, sentence is really that it's critical to continue this learning journey together. It's, as you said, Sibyl, we are in the middle, we are, we are navigating, and it's clear that we need to deepen our strategies um, to, to be able to address the complexity. And, uh, and I think we, together we can continue the practice. And so I'm so excited for all of you to continue the journey in the next uh, two webinars of the series. Uh, so together we can continue the journey. And I think we, we, we feel the urgency and, and the responsibility to do so. So thank you for joining and uh, stay tuned, uh, watch your inbox. You will receive soon an email talking about the second date and two wonderful more panelists joining us for this conversation. And so good afternoon, good evening, and thank you once again for joining us. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you.